Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. And baby, we are back in the shot. Okay. Second half now. Season six, episode nine, the aftermath. Baby, we got Trick out here dressed in all black like the Omi. Okay. Saying this is what your homie trying to get out here and get damn Duda. Duda must be stopped, y'all. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm sick of it. All right. Duda could freaking go. Duda done terrorized the whole freaking Chicago for years now. All right. Six damn seasons. He's been doing nothing but damn getting on my damn nerves. Everybody shook. Nobody could be him. Nobody is not one person in damn Chicago that could stand up and take Duda out. Well, maybe, just maybe, it might be Alicia, y'all. Might be her time to shine. I don't know. But listen, it ends up that it's damn Bakari. It ain't do that. So he fell. But you know, Trick out here saying, once a deleter, always a deleter. All right. We can't switch it up. That's just what it is. Either you could roll with it, rock with it, or you could get to damn stepping. Okay. Meantime, Bakari is shook. He don't want to be in this life no more. But he don't know what to do. He can't do shit. Okay. Tiff, baby, you can't do shit. You ghetto as hell. I have to agree with Alicia. They're a hot ass mess. Meantime, Emmett's still dumb as I don't know what. He ain't got the sense. God gave a damn roach. Him and Keisha still over here freaking arguing. Baby, we tired, okay? We tired. Either y'all do something or move the hell out the way because I'm sick of your mess. I really am. So we got to prove that we got some value. It's a reason for us to still be around. Jake over here taking money from them. Zuda little henchman and when Trig is like, yo, you took money from Zuda. No, I ain't take money from Duda. I took it from his boys. What the hell is the damn difference, Jake? Like, are you freaking kidding me right now? Wake up. Wake up. I need Jesus on the main line. I need somebody to step in and make these damn kids have some damn sense. He on the phone, okay, trying to look through Instagram and find him a new chick because we might as well just go ahead and hang it up and say it's done, stick a fork in it with him and damn Gemma. Gemma over here with her little new picture he cut and she in a damn cut okay with Bakari's sister meanwhile Bakari's sister and damn Maisha we supposed to be in the daggone booth making records and we gonna tell her we don't want nothing to eat okay we going home we tired but then we both go off on our damn owns and Maisha and damn you know, Papa, we over here talking about what we want. And I said, wait a minute, hold on. Do I see some sparks happening? Do I see a kiss about to happen? Is this reunited and we feel so good? But we get interrupted because we get a text by Kevin. Girl, Dre said, I ain't got it to do. I'm over here on force, okay? <laughs> Heading the task force. I ain't going to be on the shot no more. So we going to say that Nina, you know, asked her if she was still in love with her ex. And she said, yeah. And Nina had to let her go i said okay girl if that's what y'all gonna say jesus christ baby let's go ahead y'all get into this episode break it on down take it from the top you know how we do so we start out we pick up right where we left off because i said you know they kind of messed up with that damn trailer if i was dumb you know i wouldn't have showed that zuda was still alive because we know the last time that we seen trig he was creeping out the damn door okay and went ahead to go find him so i'm like well obviously they didn't find him because we see he in here fine as hell okay looking good too i ain't gonna lie dude i do look good and we see alicia talking about never send a boy to do a damn woman's job so we already knew he still was out here terrorizing the damn streets but anyway we start out the episode and Trey creeping through. You know, we going to be all dramatic. He did. He come up behind somebody, got the hammer on them. The damn fool turn around in this freaking Bakari. And we like, boy, if you don't take your ass home, you know, he over here talking about if you take out Duda, you turn into Duda. At this point, we really don't give a damn. Okay. <laughs> Frankly, I don't give a damn. That's what Trey was saying. But obviously, we made this trip for nothing and we ain't accomplished nothing. Ain't nothing happened. Like I said, Duda's still out here in these damn streets. So we see, you know, all the kids over here at the restaurant. We basically have, you know, um, 
Papa telling Jake, you can't keep coming here and getting no free food. Okay, you over here ordering up all this stuff. Do you got any kind of money to pay for it? And he was like, you know, well, no, I got bills and stuff like that now. When any other time, Emmett don't mind me coming by getting a little snack. So he was like, yeah, well, if you got bills, that means you ain't a child no more. And, you know, we got to put away childish things. You got to go ahead and get this, you know, bread up for this damn food that you want to munch on. And he was like, oh, getting free food don't make you a child. He said, that's exactly what the definition of it is clear you know kids are the only ones that basically can get away with eating for free now when Emmett does get in there he's basically telling jake like don't be ordering nothing if you ain't got the money to pay for it but we get really interrupted because we see it's about to be a damn job by and we gotta tell everybody to get down so we all get down thankfully nobody don't get hurt or whatever you know we feeling ourselves like is everything okay am i hit anywhere and we not and of course this guy Emmett shook the next time we see Emmett, he over here standing at the damn window like he malcolm x with a big ass damn rifle in his hand and keisha telling him to sit his behind down and we pretty much still having the same damn argument that we've been having you know we like saying we don't feel safe this is not okay i don't want to live this way but i have to say you know Emmett finally stuck up for himself usually when Keisha's going off, even though Emmy, you damn dumb. I'm sorry, child. You ain't got the sense. God gave a freaking roach, okay? At all, not even half of it. Um, you know, he do tell her, like, I'm tired of you yelling and screaming and going off on me every damn minute. Like, I know I'm a dummy. I know I messed up and I'm trying to fix this or whatever. But you in my head every two damn seconds telling me, you know, all your complaints. You complain in the morning. You complain in the night. You complain in the afternoon. You complain in the evening. Girl, shut the hell up. All right. That's what it was given. And she was like, oh, you feel like all I do is complain and nag or whatever. And he's like, yeah. He was like, I thought she was going to counseling. And she basically told some counseling is not a quick fix which is not okay definitely isn't you know is a work in progress or whatever the case may be and <clears throat> you know she's like i'm trying and then he's like i'm trying and i know i messed up and i don't know what to do and i'm breaking my back every single day you know for you and the kids and then i'm dealing with these people in the damn street and it's getting to be a little too much for me you know i'm stressed the hell out and so she was like well maybe i would smile a little bit more if i wasn't afraid for my damn life okay so I'm like, girl, you got a point there. Girl, I wouldn't even be staying at that damn house. I would have left Emmett there, to be honest with you. Then it wouldn't be nothing for us to argue about. So basically, they both kind of sit down or whatever by the fireplace. And he's like, you know, she's saying, I'm sorry if I make you feel a certain way or whatever. And he's like saying he's sorry, you know, that he even got them in this and that, you know, it's been so hard on her and things of that nature. And, um, you know, I'm really trying to fix this. And I just wanted us to have something and she's like well you're not alone in this i wanted the big house too and i appreciated her saying that because she damn sure didn't have a problem even when she found out that it came from duda she was encouraging him to do it right and she said she just want a partner that she can count on and so we kind of get to a space where we both on the same page and we being open with each other and we talking and we calming it on down so i'm like okay cool i'm good with that right they basically both like me too me too and we gonna go ahead and hug and kiss it out meanwhile back at the bar we done brung dude out here child everybody got their damn heads hanging down he on the dips you know leaned over hanging down and he's saying emmett gotta go emmett got to go okay he can't be breathing no more and they say you sure it was him and he was like well he called me on the phone and was telling me to make sure i'm alone so they was like damn emma you know he emma is dumber than we thought i say yeah child he is he is dumb as hell so you know we basically find out like you know did you go do what we you not know, told you to do or whatever and he's like yeah you know i sent the message i shot up smokey see like who the hell told you to do that you did what he was like i didn't say you know hurt my damn business or whatever i said send a damn message you gonna have people where they not even gonna want to come back there to eat or whatever you wasn't supposed to shoot up the damn chicken spot so then bakari gets worried because he's like papa was working there last night and zay you know telling him to relax or whatever that he made sure he didn't hit nobody so bakari was about to go run out so he could you know check on uh papa and here go freaking do that sit your five dollar ass down before i make change i said oh please like oh i'm just getting on my nerves and zay laughing and 
And Bakari was like, it's not funny. That's my family. And here go Nuck if you buck. I told you we your only family. I said, if you don't sit the hell down, all of y'all need to shut the hell up. Y'all don't want no family if they slapped you in your damn faces. So, you know, now Duda saying anybody that come after him needs to go. They need to be put in the ground. You can't make an attempt on him. And if the attempt fails, you know, make sure that they take them, take them out. I said, okay, Duda, whatever, right? Now, um, they say, what about Tiff's ninja? And he was like, I don't think he got nothing to do with this. He ain't got the balls. But they was like, he is Q's nephew. They said, well, whoever it was did get hit. So we need to go ahead and check these hospitals and see what names come up and who's been in here that's been injured. So, of course, you know, nothing. If you buck, go off to take care of that. I said, Lord. Baby, y'all working my damn nerves already, child. We ain't even been in here 15 damn minutes. Now, um, we um got over to Rob next, right? We see he's still hooked up to these machines. Mama over here looking over him. You know, Tiff walking. She looking through the damn glass because I don't think Mama, you know, have forgiven her just yet and let her back in the damn room since she kicked her out. And, you know, she's all worried and concerned with how he's doing and how he's coming along and whether he's made any progress yet or not. And then we see Emmett talking to Darnell and telling him, you know, because he like, well, how the hell he knew that you were coming anyway? Oh, because I'm dumb, dad. You know, I picked up the damn phone and called him and told him he was coming <laughs> to set it up. And he was like, you did what? And again, we like, you dumb, baby. We need a shirt that says you dumb. All right. You know, you a dummy, right? You big damn dummy. And he's like, yeah, I know I messed up. And so he was like, well, what are you going to do? And Emmett says, you know, he going to get security. He like security ain't going to stop nothing. If he really want to take you out or whatever, he was like, well, I don't know what else the hell to do. And of course we like telling him you can't hide here forever. We know that. So he said, well, you have to make him feel like he needs you, right? Like you're not useless and you're more uh, to him. You have to convince him that you are more uh, worth to him alive than that, right? So he it may gets up to start getting dressed, and he like, where you going? And he said, like you said, I can't just sit here. I can't be doing nothing. I can't hide forever. I'm gonna go ahead to the shop. So Darnell basically just told him he was gonna go with him. Okay, one thing Darnell gonna do is try to back his child up, even when he be in a jack behind. So okay, cool. Now we get to the shop and we cleaning up and stuff. And his mom comes like, what's going on? How deep are you into this? Right? So he tells her that, um, you know, it was him and Rob that went over there and tried to take Duda out. And she get all emotional, of course, start crying. She like, you know, I can't believe this. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to bury you. I'm not going to bury you. Like, what the hell was on your mom? What made you think that you could go out here and do this? So he's saying he going to make a deal with Duda, right? He running with this idea that Darnell gave him. He's saying how he got the gift of gab. Baby, I cracked up when mama was like, bitch, with women, not with no damn men and definitely not with no gangsters and not with do that yeah you might have to get the gas to get somebody out their damn drawers but this is a completely different damn you know situation so he's telling her just please trust me just trust me you know it was funny when Darnell was like woman you know stay out of this and she was like this ain't no damn 1950s don't tell me nothing about being no damn woman and staying out of it obviously I don't stayed out of it long enough because you two damn fools over here thinking y'all got shit handled and now the damn thing looking handled to me right so he just was hugging her and telling her that everything was going to be okay. And Darnell just looked like, you know, he feeling all freaking helpless. Like he's more, he wish he could do. Now, meanwhile, um, you know, Papa was basically talking to Bakari about what happened and saying, you know, I could have been taken out. Anybody could have been hit. You know, of course, bullets don't have no names. You know, what would have happened? What was going to go down with my damn Papa pulpit and all of that? And Bakari like, yo, this wasn't me. I didn't want to do this. And of course, Papa's telling him, you need to get out of this. And he's like, I am trying to get out of it, but I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do, how I'm going to get out of it, right? I'm trying to change. And so we have a little bonding money moment and we go ahead and hug it out or whatever and just have a moment of silence okay we need a little prayer papa come on and pray for bakari child because i don't know what else going to happen at this point y'all now um we get to uh, child mm -mm -mm. we get back over to do our raggedy behind right and 
um they saying like because you know we did have knuck if you buck show up to the hospital right but mama okay she ain't dumb at the all she had rob moved and as they was moving him tiff was like you know how you just gonna move him out the hospital why are you moving him and she was like obviously because whoever he went after is gonna you know come and be searching and then they could find him so no he gonna go ahead and get the top of the line here right here in my damn house i ain't taking no chances in that hospital so by the time knuck if you buck got there and had his little son and so on and went in the room he wasn't there so Duda's trying to figure out like how the hell did he get moved or whatever and he's like you know when I went there his shot was there but it was no damn body in there so he told him to go back okay check again see if Tiff is anywhere walking around because he's like if he was hurt then you know her behind not gonna be too far she gonna be definitely checking him on him or whatever right and then Zay he's telling to keep an eye on damn Emin and he was like I might need to go myself and they said well you still supposed to be laying low he said yeah I was trying to lay low and let y'all fools take care of some stuff but apparently I can't do that I have to get out here and make sure everything is right my damn self because y'all sitting here playing damn games and I I ain't got time for it or whatever right and so you know he's sending them back out one more damn time but you know basically he at this point ready to walk out there in the streets his damn so it's like when you want something done you got to do it yourself right and so he asked what's going on with bakari's sister and He's like, you know, she's supposed to be staying close to Bakari and helping us out with that because she supposedly has this trust with him. But now she over here messing around with the damn girl and we ain't paying her to be with the girl. Like how much money have you gave her so far? He like 30 racks. He like, oh, well, that should last her for a while. Make sure she knows that because we ain't got it and we ain't going to keep on giving her stuff for her just to spend up on her silly ass music. That's not what we brought her here for. So make sure you tell her again. And I'm like, like, oh, that's where she got all that damn money where she could just throw 10 on, you know, Gemma just like that as an advance for her to be a damn manager. So you supposed to be helping your brother to stay caught up into this bull crap with damn Duda. Like, oh, she raggedy too in more ways than one. So, of course, um, <clears throat> we um get over here and Papa set up a meeting between, you know, um, Emmett and Bakari and Bakari's kind of saying like what the hell do you want from me what am I supposed to do you know um Bakari tells him you need a damn bulletproof vest like you so dumb you went and tried to get this dude and you missed at it so now he wants you and there's nothing you're gonna be able to say that's gonna prevent him from coming after you that's that on that and then he's telling Bakari like you ain't tired of this you don't want to get out of this you're okay with being in this situation he was like at the end of the day we have helped you we all fed you and looked out for you and different ways whether it was me you know Rashad um Trey or what you know Victor whatever the case may be we have all had your back and it's only right that you have our back in return so he was like I know it gotta be you know some people in his organization that's not feeling him and want him out of there too and you being on the inside I'm pretty sure that you have seen and heard things and I know you don't want him there you know anymore whatever right and so I guess he's basically wanting him to see what info he could get on anybody that may be a little leery and don't really want to be around with dude I know more, which that shouldn't be damn too hard to find. Now, in the meantime, we see Zay go and talk to Bakari's sister or whatever, and you know, she is still asking for damn more money the minute he sit down talking about I already done spent it on. He like spent it all on what? You know, I gave her 10 racks to be my manager. He was like, I ain't never heard no crap like that. We're giving nobody no damn events. And oh, I spent for an apartment. I spent for my clothes. Oh, well, that's on you. We ain't got money just to be giving out. Mind you, Zay ain't say nothing, even though that is basically what dude I told him to say. He talking about something. I'm going to talk to dude and see what he say. He already told you he ain't giving her nothing else, dude so you know he like but you do need to go and talk to your brother and you know basically do the damn job that we already paying you to do to begin with and she tells him she on it i said girl you don't look like you on a damn thing from where i'm sitting but okay beat them in the head now 
we get to the studio and we see Maisha in here, you know, doing her thing or whatever and asking them how it sound. And they like, eh, you know, it sound okay. It's all right. Basically was giving me, it ain't all that girl. You could do a little bit better, but you know, um, Bakari's sister ended up saying, let me jump in the booth. And at first Maisha's kind of rolling her eyes up in her head or whatever, but then we like, I right, go ahead do what you gotta do. And apparently they feel like they are good mix. They is good team together. And we like, shoot, while we didn't think of this before, and y'all actually could do some more things together. And when they come up out the booth, you know, Maisha's basically like, well, how about we all go get something to eat? And they like, nah, girl, maybe another time. Okay, Gemma talking about, I got you. Let's take a rain check. And the next time it's going to be on me. And Maisha's like, okay, girl, cool. Like, I'm going to hold you to that. I ain't going to forget. So next thing you know, Zay over here at the Jake apartment. Okay, Jake doing his thing. He got all his different little stuff all up. Like, you know. There's a whole little mini store going on, all right? We got the clothes on the hanger. We got a whole bunch of stuff, and we seeing how we make it from, you know, hand, and it's called seeds because you put us the seeds in the ground, and we grow, and he like, oh, I'm feeling that. So he like, well, let me get this sweater, this shirt over here, you know, get a couple of T-shirts, and, you know, Jake saying it's coming along, but it could be better. He talking about some, well, I guess he took the hint, you know, from them, um, you know, Bakari's sister as far as giving Gemma events, and he done pulled out a big stack talking about this could be advanced for you to go ahead and do what you got to do you know jake like what the hell is this for he like you know to help you out to get where you need to be or whatever and just give me a couple of those t-shirts over there and this and that and it looked like jake might have pulled like four items off and gave it to him i'm saying jake don't take this nothing in damn life is free and free should have kill you ain't no way in the world somebody just gonna randomly walk in here and you know this dude is connected to duda and they just gonna be like oh yeah here take this this is gonna help you out buddy just because i like you like come on you always been a smart kid and yet you go and do something so freaking dumb just for the moment meanwhile trig in here sitting down smoking or whatever and his girl coming over like, yo, you know, since when you sitting down smoking, he like, you know, when you started smoking again, he like, you know, I'm a little stressed and I needed to relieve it. So don't bother me right now. Okay. This is calming my damn nerves. So she like, you know, you had me so worried when you ran out of here and we're all taking a damn hammer and going to do what you was trying to do. I'm glad you wasn't able to do it or whatever. And you brought your damn behind back home. And he like, yeah, boy, well, you know, it didn't solve the problem. And she's like, yeah, well, well, you taking out somebody is not going to solve the problem either and i don't want to be with somebody that anytime at the drop of a hat they could end up turning into a k i double l double l okay y'all know what i'm trying to say and he said baby if you are k i double l you are k i double l it ain't a damn thing you can do about that we don't change i said okay trig you better let her know so <coughs> sis ain't like hearing that and she got up and walked away i said mm-hmm Okay, Trang. Okay. Now, in the meantime, we get a little conversation between Rashad girl and, um, you know, Deja or whatever. And damn, um, what the heck is the other chick name that was messing with Duda? Y'all know who the hell I'm talking about. Can't think of her name right now to come back to me, but put it in the comments. We get a conversation between them two. They laughing, they talking. She like, you know, I can't believe Rashad did what he did the first time that I, Tracy, the first time I lower my expectations, I end up with a damn dud that ain't about, you know, crap or whatever the case may be. And on top of that, he cheats on me and all of this. And so she like girl i'm so sorry that that happened to you whatever and she was like yeah you know these men ain't shit so she's trying to convince her i said it really sounds to me like she's trying to convince herself much like it did when she was talking to nina and them about it before but she's telling her how the single life is supposed to be so much better okay it is better over here with the single girls you know when's the last time you watched waiting to excel when the last time you just sat and relaxed and drunk some wine and listened to some music and you know you ain't got to smell no weed when they there and no cigars and have them leaving no mess and we laughing like you right you absolutely right girl you know when's the last time that you just you know masturbated and was able to lay there afterwards and not think about nothing and she like mm, child i don't even know she was like exactly that's my point i said tracy you so full of crap because if dude i call your phone right damn now you be leaving zasia sitting right there to go run after him but okay so now you know we move on from there and um we um see that 
oh god sorry y'all lost my train of thought we move on from there and we see um Emmett and um actually go like to check on rob and see how he doing how he coming along or whatever right and keisha had i'm sorry y'all uh, yeah keisha had no, I'm sorry. Tiff had opened the door for them and let them in, right? And of course, she was going off on him like, boy, what was on your mind? Why the hell did y'all, you know, go there? Like, I told you to talk some sense into him, not join him. And he's like, well, how was he coming along or whatever, right? And why he not in the hospital? We figuring he doing better. And she was like, no, his mother brought him home because she didn't trust it. And she thought somebody was going to come after him. So he was like, can I see him? And she said, yeah, you know, you go ahead. She said, they got everything they need his mom got him money and he got the best of the best and he had all the different machines and stuff that was hooked up to him when he was in the hospitals basically hooked up here you know doctors coming in and out and all of that so he go in the room and then he come right the hell back out like your mom his mom is crazy so when she get out here she like who the hell is these people girl you letting in my damn house i told you no more company and you know tiff is basically like these is our friends so she talking about some because keisha was like well we could go ahead and go she was like and who are you keisha's like i'm keisha she was like and how do y'all know each other man why are we gonna go down and give the damn history lesson you know emmett talking about well do you want to know all of the kids or just the kids we God, you know, together because Tiff was like, well, first, you know, she was with Emmett, they broke up, then I was with Emmett, then we broke up, then they got back together, and because we have a child together, we over here trying to be one happy family and know how to raise the kids together or whatever, right? And then she was like, I have one child by him, you know, Keisha have one child by him, and Keisha's like, and then he got two other ones by two other baby mothers. <laughs> baby, raw mother said, what in the ghetto Brady damn bunch is this trifling ass shit? Like, where's the respect where is the family values okay bring back self-respect back in my day we didn't do this and all of this and that and next thing you know rob is a miracle okay i guess from his mama going off on them he miraculously wake up and is able to walk out now with a damn walker <laughs> walker and as she talking about sanctified marriage he talking about it ain't that damn sanctified if we being honest and then of course keisha run over to him and give him a kiss you know emmett is just like i'm so happy to see you up and standing and he was like how you feeling he said i feel like i got shot okay yes you did <laughs> that's why you're feeling that way and of course he asked that we get him and is like hell to the no we did not okay we missed badly okay we made jackasses out of ourselves so tiff was going to take him back in the room and she was like i'm his mama let me take him back in there you know she telling him she happy to see him up but he needs to go and lay his ass back down and you know he just was like i'm good i said okay rob whatever i guess we happy that you okay now in the meantime um child tiff the door freaking rings now i said tiff this ain't your damn house you being a little too freaking rude for me right and it was um you know uh rob mom's uh, you know alicia mom friend coming of course the one she said she gonna need that damn favor that she got set up with the damn bar and was working for duda and all of that so she over here ghetto as hell who you oh hold on a minute then come back down just to smoke and i said raw mom is okay with you smoking downstairs in her house so she looking and she like oh what you smoke you know what i'm saying you want some and she like don't mind if i do thank you very much or whatever so she go ahead and let her take a couple pulls and she like oh where you get this from she's talking about i grow it myself or whatever right and of course she mentions how because she was like and how you know raw mom and she said well she had helped me out got me a little you know cigar bar thing where the fellas could kind of vent and be able to do it legally and you know have their own little space and she was like i like that so she was like well you know, you like the smoke or whatever. And she said, yeah, I like that. So she said, hmm, I wouldn't mind talking with you and maybe we could do a little something, something and have a, you know, investment or whatever in my cigar lounge where you could have your product there. So of course, you know, Tiff is interested in that. Like, hey, I like that. You know, she taking all her information to give it to Tiff and we like, we could talk a little bit more about it. Right. And, um, finally alicia comes down and she's like you know thanking her for coming here whatever and thanking her for the beautiful flowers and she's like you know tiff i'm gonna need you to excuse us for a minute while tiff turned around and was like 
Um, I was here first. Girl, this my damn house. I don't give a damn if you was here first or not. Like, excuse yourself and take your ass in the room and rob. What are we doing here? I said, we done went and got all damn comfortable up in the freaking lady house, child. So... Of course, Alicia tells her, like, you know, excuse her, that's Rob's girlfriend, and she over here, like, oh, I like her, she seems cool or whatever. So when Alicia sits down, she like, mm, girl, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to call in that favor, okay? Time's up, it's time for what I said when you, when I said you was going to owe me when I had said that, yeah, girl, I'm cashing in, okay? Um, how we feeling? How we doing with Duda? How close are we to him? Okay, are we still keeping in communication with him? Do he trust you? And she basically like, yeah, girl, I'm good with him. You know, he trusts me. Absolutely. You know, we doing very well together. And she like, okay, that's what I like to hear. Okay. And we got that old evil smile from, you know, <laughs> um, a thin line between love and hate baby coming through on Miss Alicia. I said, okay, I'm here for it. I'm ready to see what the hell she going to have in store for Mr. Duda. Okay. I want to see it all. We cashing in on the damn favor. Now, um, you know, when we go from there, we basically had a moment where, um, because when Gemma and, you know, Bakari's sister had left the studio, whatever, even though they told, um, Maisha, like, nah, girl, we tired and we don't want to be bothered and, you know, we going to catch you the next time. They actually did go out and eat and they posting the damn food and the pictures of them together up in the freaking, you know, Instagram for everybody to see. So of course, Maisha peeped it. So she have a moment that she's sitting and talking with Papa and she like these raggedy behind bitches, you know, they told me they wasn't going nowhere to eat and the next thing i'm seeing they damn pictures on the freaking screen and he was like well maybe they changed their minds and it was just last minute she like last minute my but damn behind okay i ain't dumb so <clears throat> We sit down and we get to start talking about, you know, what do you want in life? Where do you see your go for self going? You know, do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Okay. And she got the whole breakdown of taking care of her mom, you know, taking care of her family, living in the high rise, wanting to have her own family one day. You know, Papa's talking about him owning a church him wanting the first lady, him also wanting her family. And we quiet for one minute and we looking deep into each other's eyes and it's looking like we about to go in for the kiss but then we get interrupted of course by this text message from Kev where she like you know oh I'm gonna have to go ahead and take this or whatever because I had already missed Kev phone call earlier and he like oh tell him I said hi I said mm -hmm, yeah okay we got our eyes on you you know <laughs> meantime Gemma also goes and has a conversation with uh, what's her name, Tierra, whatever, the daddy girlfriend, she bringing in some tea and she's like, you know, you wanted to talk to me about something. She said, yeah, I kissed the girl and I liked it. She's like, oh, okay, so you just kind of filling things out, exploring, you know, I went through that phase and I tried that before too or whatever, you know, sometimes people do that to see what they like or don't like. And she was like, so everybody do it. She was like, no, some people just don't have no interest or some people don't feel like they need to do it because they go on by the society norms or whatever the case may be. And then some do and then they may say hey i like this or no i don't because she was asking does that make her gay and she's like no girl that don't make you gay or whatever so she said well should i tell jake about it she's like i can't tell you that part and now all i could tell you is kind of follow your heart do what you feel is the best to do or whatever right and she was like i think i'm gonna tell him so we could pretty much see that this relationship is about to be over between jake and Gemma. ain't nobody shocked because even he ended up being on the phone looking through some pictures and it looked like the girl was, you know, messaging him back or whatever the case may be after, you know, Trig comes over here and he's telling Trig about getting the money from Duda's man as if he's supposed to be excited. And he like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why would you take money from, you know, Duda's man or whatever? You basically took money from Duda. And like I said, he over here like, yeah, I can finally expand my business. And he like, yeah, how you going to do that? He's saying it's not from Duda. It's from his man. What's the difference? It's the same difference, Jake. And he talking about some, I know how to handle this. I know what I'm doing. I'm not stupid. He's saying you should be happy for me. He like, yeah, I would be happy for you, but how I'm going to be happy for you when I'm scared for you because you literally put yourself in danger and you saying that you know how to handle this and you 
playing stupid is exactly, you know, I know how to play the game. He said, that's what everybody thinks and says before they in it. So he's saying, I'm not going to lose or whatever. And basically he had an attitude and didn't really want to talk to him after that. So he's telling him how they having a meeting, you know, a little circle at the house tonight and he should come through. He took him out. I don't know about all of that. I'm busy or whatever. So he said, well, your mental is more important than damn money. You know, he's telling him he'll see he got some orders to fill. Right. And then he like, whatever, man, you know, so this is when he leaves that he's looking at the damn phone and notices some other chick that he like, mm. I'm like, Jake, 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 Jesus. Okay. We didn't have you make it through all this time and do a turnaround for you to become such the damn big dummy. But I guess we did because here we are. So now, you know, we, um, go from that to, <laughs> um, basically, um, them at the house having this circle right and Bakari just kind of written to them telling them about the dream he had and how Kuga Kugi had came to him and you know him saying that this is not what he saw for him and them saying well what do you want to do and he's saying I want to get out of this but I don't know what steps I could take to get out of this you know Emmett being real frustrated and saying I can't sit here and just be scared and you know keep going through the motions and they saying that we are here for you and we are you know want to help you and stuff like that as far as Bakari and you know he was like I ain't gonna be scared no more I'm going over here to talk to them Duda and of course we telling him that's a big ass mistake please Emmett and do not do it and of course his hard-headed ass take his behind out the damn door any damn way then we get over here to do that or whatever he's in here having drinks and Emmett is like I heard you was looking for me here I am okay what you gonna do what you gonna do <laughs> okay Emmett tried to come in here with the big boy energy which is always just hilarious to me so of course Duda is like you got a lot of damn nerve okay you really ready you got your suit ready for the funeral and he's telling him nah he ain't got it yet okay he got it on hold he don't put it on layaway so he asked him if he have any last words and he was like you know well my last words is basically you need me you know you ain't gonna be able to do nothing without me because oh i forgot to mention that zay stopped by and spoke to him as well and was telling him his time is up and he playing a dangerous game or whatever and emma had emphasized to him how he's important and who's gonna run the shop like is he about to put him there is he about to put knuck if you buck there is he about to be there who's gonna be the front man like y'all are some street ninjas but ain't none of y'all can handle this business you know bakari can't step in and do it so he still needs me when it comes to that and he was even asking Zay like so where was you the night that he disappeared what you had going on okay because I'm sure there's a few of y'all that want to go ahead and take him out and stuff like that right and so he basically was saying like you know Oh, what do you think you getting in my head and you making me want to, you know, take Duda out? And he said, no, I'm not saying that, but I am saying that whoever takes Duda out will become the new Duda. And at the end of the day, I don't want to be, you know, the new Duda. I don't want any part of that. So whether Zay wanted to fall for it or not, he kind of fell for it to a certain degree. So now at this point, he's coming, you know, Emmy himself and sitting down with Duda and he's telling him like, yo, you got people within your circle that want you out. You got a lot of people that want you out. How you know it was me that tried to take you out okay do you have the damn proof and even if i did i didn't do it by myself and then duda is saying he pretty sure rob has something to do with it he like do you got the proof of that and duda had to stop for a minute and be like yeah no i don't okay so he was like, well, I could find out some info for you and I could find out where Zay was that night when he disappeared or whatever, right? And then Zuda come and sit next to him because he kept saying, you really think you so damn important. You know, think of real high of yourself or whatever. And he's like, why shouldn't I take you out right here, right now? And Emma still keeps telling him like, oh, I'll owe you. And he was like, it's nothing you could give me and owe me that much. You know, if you're the person that tried to take me out, that I will let you still live. And he was like, yeah, I promise you, like anything you want, I will do and I will make it worth your while you will not regret letting me live so basically he like all right he come back to the other side of the damn bench and sit down and we put down this photo and we like a life for a life of course when he look at the damn photo who the hell you think is there but Alicia ass okay mind you Zay he kept still asking him who did you go to meet and he like oh we keeping secrets now and he was like well where's Emmett at now and he was telling him like oh he said he would be easy to find and he literally repeated the exact same thing to 
you know, do that at Emmett did. So he was already laughing like, oh, he got in your head, huh? Because why would you be coming and telling me something about I need him and he important and he the only one that can keep the business going. And he like, nah, I'm just trying to be smart, you know, as if it was his idea and take credit for it. Child, they all a damn mess. But anyway, that was the shot, y'all. Y'all put it in the comments. Tell me what you thought about this first episode back, what you liked, what you didn't like, all that good stuff. If I left anything out, put that in the comments we will talk about it down there give me a wave let me know you came by put some flames up in the sky until next time y'all <laughs>